don't hold me to this, but my plan is to file two motions, a motion for a mistrial and a motion for, for bail. There's so many grounds for a mistrial at this point. Um, the easiest one, if you want to give um, Judge Ingram a simple way to declare a mistrial, is... This is possibly going to be the end of this YSL RICO trial because Judge Glanville just got removed from the entire trial. Now, we went over it in another video. You guys can go back and watch the video where I went through and review, reviewed the full motion here. But I wanted to highlight a couple of things that Judge Rachel Krause said when she decided that it was time for Judge Glanville to get off of the case because the way she phrases a lot of things in this motion is very telling it's i mentioned earlier i was definitely wrong when i was considering what was going to happen and what were going to be the next steps before judge rachel kraus made her decision because i did not think she was going to take the steps to get glanville out of there not not saying anything against her or her character but just because of the the terrible situation that she's in when she has to tell one of her colleagues that you know, he messed up and he's not able to do his job properly and hasn't done his job properly. But I want to go back through this uh, analysis and discussion section because I section because I think it's really funny. Some of the phrasing and some of the, the way she words what went on and what happened and how she refers to Judge Glanville. And you can really hear in the way she phrases things, how she really felt about the decision she was in, in some senses forced to make. All right. So. Let's go back through this. And I've got a couple other things I want y'all to see uh, the analysis and discussion. All right. Here, Judge Glanville had previously announced on the record that the motions were timely and supported by an affidavit. These are the motions to recuse that were filed against him three times. We have one from Kayla, one from Mr. Weinstein, and then we had the third one, which was from Brian Steele, uh, a.k.a. Young Thug. All right. Judge Glanville necessarily determined that the third criteria was satisfied, i.e. that the recusal might be authorized in the fact alleged in the motion were assumed true. Therefore, Judge Glanville was required to refer the motion for reassignment and was prohibited from opposing the motion. And that was by the Supreme Court, if y'all remember. It is worth noting that this court agrees generally with Judge Glanville's assessment of the propriety of the ex parte meeting so she's already throwing judge glanville bone here she's saying hey judge glanville you know i agreed with you i think the ex parte meeting was okay and i think it's funny that she throws that in here um, and judge glanville he was kind of saying the same thing that was his defense that uh the ex parte meeting was needed it was necessary and they didn't do anything wrong by not notifying the defense that this was going to take place and then she says, while the meeting could have and perhaps should have, perhaps should have, oh my gosh, taken place in open court, nothing about the fact of the meeting or the substance discussed was inherently improper. So again, she's taken Judge, Gl <laughs> Judge Glanville's side. And I can see them having this conversation you know, in the hallway as they're walking by saying, hey, Judge Glanville, you know, I just want you to know that I'm with you. Now, I appreciate all the work that you did on the YSL trial. I didn't want to have to make this decision. I think you did the right thing in holding that meeting. And it's, it's just unfortunate. I had to go by the letter of the law. And uh, she says, however, in this order, in his order, denying defendant Kendrick's motion and in the process of making his record on July 1st, Judge Glanville added facts, provided context, questioned the veracity of allegations and otherwise explained his decisions and actions and argued why those actions were proper. While it may be appropriate for the judge to disclose information relevant to his potential recusal, such a disclosure must be made in a way that is objective, dispassionate, non-argumentative as possible so that the judge is not reasonably perceived as host as a hostile witness or advocate and we've seen some of the things that have taken place and especially what took place when judge glanville was trying to force brian Steele to tell him uh, who told him about the meeting so when it comes to being dispassionate dispassionate and non-argumentative i think judge glanville fails there 
and presenting his record as the recusal issues and in his ruling on Kendrick's motion, Judge Glanville evaluated and accepted the truth of his own factual allegations mandating his recusal. <sighs> Dang, that's tough. Rachel's upset that she had to do this. She says this court, no doubt. <laughs> This, this part is funny. This court has no doubt that Judge Glanville can and would continue presiding fairly over this matter, matter if the recusal were denied. Come on, man. Let's be real about this. The ex parte meeting wasn't the only issue when it came to this entire case. The ex parte meeting was just a small part of a bigger picture of Judge Glanville's behavior just not being not being okay when it came to an open court and brian Steele even mentioned that in his supplement uh to motion to recuse when he said hey this man in open court in front of the jury was saying that i was unprepared and i was unprofessional and that's just not okay for a judge to do now is that worth is that something that should get him kicked out of the trial i don't know but come on judge Krause, we're not going to sit here and act like that <laughs> He didn't do anything wrong, okay? But she says, the court has no doubt that Judge Glanville can and would continue presiding fairly over the matter if the recusal motion were denied. But the necessity of presenting the public, or I'm sorry, preserving the public's confidence in the judicial system weighs in favor of excusing Judge Glanville from further handling this case. Basically, they want to save face and they want people in Fulton County and across the United States to believe in the justice system. The jury might still be out on that, pun intended, but y'all have to let me know what you think in the comments. All right, and then it says, based on the foregoing, this court hereby orders as follows. Defendant DeMonte Kendrick's motion to recuse Chief Judge, Gl Chief Judge Glanville is granted. Kayla Bumpus's motion to quash the show cause order and or the re to recuse Judge Glanville is denied as moot because she didn't need to show up. The meeting and the hearing was canceled there. Number three, defendant Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thugs, motion to disqualify recuse Judge Glanville from all further dealings in the above reference case as amended and supplemented is granted. The clerk of court shall resign or reassign this case using the court's case assignment procedures. And we're going to talk about their procedures in a minute and who got assigned that case, which we mentioned yesterday as well. And this was so ordered on the 15th day of July 2024 by Rachel Krause. All right. You can see the tear stains right here from when she... <laughs> <laughs> she had to sign this anyway let's go ahead and get into a couple other aspects of this case everything that went down of course y'all know the lawyer of the year brian Steele. he had to respond and shout out to thugger daily for getting this statement from brian Steele. we're gonna see here what he said i know it's gonna this is gonna be a little cut off on the screen so let me just leave it here so y'all can read it if i try to zoom in on this i might be able to get it in there yeah there we go all right, here we go. This is a statement from Young Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, regarding the recusal of Judge Glanville. Below, please find Brian Steele's statement regarding the recusal order. Young Thug is innocent of the charges brought in this indictment, and to clear his name, he sought a speedy trial, one in which he would receive the constitutional guarantees of a fair trial with an impartial judge presiding and ethical prosecutors following the law. Taking more shots here, man. I love it. Sadly, Judge Glanville and the prosecutors have run afoul of their duties under the law. Mr. Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, is grateful that the reviewing court agreed with him and entered the order recusing and disqualifying Judge Glanville from presiding over Young Thug's case. We look forward to proceeding with the trial. Uh, I'm sorry. We look forward to proceeding with a trial judge who will fairly and faithfully follow the law. All right. So shout out to Brian Steele again. He needs to get an award because he was putting in work over there. He did not back down. He went all the way up to the Georgia Supreme Court to fight this thing. And he was even willing to spend time in jail with Young Thug. Uh, this is if you ever need a lawyer, this is the kind of lawyer you want. So the next question we're going to ask is, okay, now that this is all done, 
taken care of. We're beginning to move on. What are the next steps? Not only what are the next steps, but who is going to be taking over the case? Well, we have more information for you on that. Talked about it a little bit yesterday, but as y'all see, a new judge has been assigned to this trial, and that is going to be Judge Sharika L. Ingram. Okay, give a little bit of her background. There really isn't much here. Uh, her judicial assignment started in 2018, and she's been there for the past six years, going on seven years. So congratulations to her. She's also a, magist a magistrate. Uh, she was a magistrate judge from 2015 to 2018. All right, and here's her education. She went to Clark Atlanta University, and uh, she also went to Georgia State, which is super dope. And then we've got a little bit more of her experience. Now, when it comes to when it comes to Judge Shakira Ingram's background and her, I don't want to say reputation, but her relationships with people maybe inside the district attorney's office or Judge Glanville, I don't have much information and wasn't able to find much information on that other than her courtroom, which is 7E. And they're on, she's on a separate floor from Judge Glanville. I think Judge Glanville is an 8F if I remember right. So they're on different floors. They weren't really working that closely with each other as far as we know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that going forward. But there's been a lot of a lot of things circulating when it comes to what's going to happen next in the trial, what decisions that Judge Ingram is going to have to make moving forward, because we're going to review in a second and hear what can possibly happen going forward. And it's looking like it may end up leading to a mistrial. Obviously, it's going to be up to Judge Ingram's discretion, but I want to look at this interview that Doug Weinstein did uh, with Megan. Shout out to Megan Cunniff. I've always mispronounced her name, so I apologize, Megan. But he gives a little bit of insight into what their next steps are going to be and what could possibly happen now that this trial is being taken over from another judge. So y'all check this one out. And shout out to Megan for posting this. I'll leave a link to this post and to her and to her profile over on X, so y'all can follow her if you, if you want to. Don't hold me to this, but my plan is to file two motions, a motion for a mistrial and a motion for, for bail. There's so many grounds for a mistrial at this point. Um, the easiest one, if you want to give um, Judge Ingram a simple way to declare a mistrial, is the fact that Georgia law requires this case to be unwound back to June the 12th. Um, and that's a which big means deal. The, I mean, and the jury has heard testimony from Mr. Copeland for days after that. How do you unwind that? How do you unring that bell? How do you how do you take their notes away from them that yeah. they've taken? How do you manage that? Um, if, if if there was a mistrial and you're and you're with the new judge, how quickly would you all be prepared for a new trial? I know you're hoping you you would hope and, and move to just get the indictment thrown out, but. Could could a new trial start soon? Or I mean, it seems well, like it, to the extent that we file a motion for a mistrial, it'll be because we were goaded into it by the prosecutor's actions. Um, she she put the judge. In, I mean, the prosecutors put the judge in that position. They had that ex parte meeting that was totally inappropriate. That's true. Um, violated multiple. And I, I understand what Judge Krause said, but I don't have to agree with everything. In oh, yeah. order. Obviously, I agree with the conclusion, but, you know, if we win and if we file that motion for mistrial, it'll be because we were goaded into it by the state. And having been goaded into it, I believe double jeopardy should attach and there shouldn't be another trial. Wow, that is huge, man. We'll listen to the rest of the video here in a second, but he made a couple of points that we're going to go into. And I'm going <laughs> to give you guys a little bit background on that here in a minute. But he talks about the case being unwound, how far they're going to have to go back in the case, uh, what Judge Ingram is going to have to look at. She's going to have to review so many testimonies. She's going to have to review all of the motions. She's going to have to review any rulings that were done. And then you've got this jury that was here. You've got all the taxpayers dollars that are going into this. And of course, you have the defendants who some, if not all of them, are sitting in jail right now. And don't have their freedom because this case has been an absolute mess. So there's so many factors that go into this that she's going to look at. I personally think it's looking like it will be a mistrial. But I mean, you never know because at this point it's really up to 
the judge's discretion and what she decides and thinks is best and fair. So we'll see. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I did see it got assigned to a judge today. What's the thinking that that is going to be the judge? Cause it will, we have to see if she recuses over the next couple of days or. Um, I don't know if she really has a basis to recuse. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have no issue with another Fulton County judge um, hearing this case. Uh, Brian does. Um, we will take whatever judge is assigned to it. If they're an unbiased judge, I expect um, a just outcome for Mr. Kendrick. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to seek recusal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, gosh, y- y- y'all have to be celebrating now. How do the, how do you get the word to your client like this? How do the defendants find yeah, it? That's a huge win. Um, I spoke to my client's mother, um well actually i was in court so i texted her as soon as i found out and then spoke to her after court um a lot of people may know miss tasha because she's uh, in the courtroom pretty much every day um right up there with miss sylvia uh and i think i think miss tasha knows everyone in the courthouse but uh yeah and if y'all want to watch this feel full interview you can find it on x and i'll also link to it in the description now I did some research and wanted to give some background to you guys and information on what could possibly happen once this thing is being unwound and if it moves toward mistrial. Okay. And there's eight points I want to go through here just to give you guys an idea. Now, again, I am not a lawyer. This is, these are just some of the things I found and was able to research on cases that have been done in the past. You can even look at recent cases um, that have had a mistrial ruling or have had a judge been recused and this is how things have went throughout those trials all right so take this information for what you will for what you will and i think y'all should definitely do your own research on this topic too all right so the first thing that would happen is what we already saw they appoint a new judge a new judge will be assigned to the case this judge uh, will take over all the responsibilities and will need to become familiar with the details. Okay. We just talked about that earlier. The second thing that will most likely happen is the review of previous rulings, all right? In this case, we haven't seen that many, so this shouldn't be a big hold up here. But what that means is the judge is going to review any rulings or orders issued by uh, the recuse judge, which is Judge Glanville, to determine if they need to be reconsidered. This ensures that any potential bias or improper influence from the recused judge does not affect the case right now. Here's here's where we get into the heavy part of what would take place for this entire case being unwound. There's a a lot that has to go on here. All right. The third thing is rehearing motions. Oh, my gosh. Parties may request that certain motions or hearings be reheard by the new judge. This is particularly important if there were significant rulings made by the recused judge that could impact the outcome of the trial. Fourth thing is the reevaluation of evidence. This is y'all remember those 17 hours plus of footage. Now, all of it hasn't been shown from little Woody's uh, little Woody's interrogations, I should say. But I mean, that's just a small piece of it. The new judge may need to reevaluate evidence that was previously admitted or excluded by the recused judge, Judge Glanville. This helps ensure that all evidence is considered fairly. Scheduling new hearings. What a mess, man. Can y'all imagine having to clean up someone else's mess like this? Scheduling new hearings. The new judge will need to schedule new hearings and set new deadlines for the case. This may involve rescheduling the trial date. Man, pre-trial conferences and other important procedural events. Notification to parties. All parties involved in the case will be notified of the judge's recusal and the appointment of the new judge. They will also be informed of any charges to the case schedules or procedures. Yet yeah, you got we don't want to run into any issues with the defense, so make sure you let them know what's going on. Potential appeals. In some cases, parties may file appeals or other legal challenges related to the judge's recusal. These appeals may address whether the recusal was warranted or how the case should proceed following recusal. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Weinstein talked about this a little bit, how he could possibly um, ask for a mistrial. They could possibly ask for a new judge. Uh, there's, there's so many other things that could go on 
during this really waiting period. And they're going to try and get Bond too. They're going to at least try and get these guys out of prison while Judge Ingram gets everything settled. Um, ensuring, impartial, ensuring impartiality. Throughout the process, the court will take steps to ensure the new judge remains impartial and that the integrity of the trial is maintained. All right. So those are the main points that I see are going to need to be addressed when it comes to Judge Ingram taking over. How long this is going to take? I don't know. <laughs> it seems like it might be in her best interest and in the best interest of the court, the defense, the prosecution or there just to be a mistrial. I'll be interested to see. Sometime at some point today, we're probably going to see some type of motion either for a mistrial or for bond for one, if not all of the defendants. So y'all be on the lookout for that. And if it drops, be sure that we're going to address it here. But let me know what you guys think. Should Judge Ingram just let it go? Let there be a mistrial and that way they can move on. They can free thug. They can free Yak Gotti. Or does she need to go ahead, proceed with the case just so we can get this over with? Because so much time has already been put into it. I want to hear what y'all say in the comments 